We all know that Mendel was working with pea plants and he was performing his observations by crossing different types of pea plants. One of his experiments involved crossing a violet flower plant with a white flower plant, in which case the violet color was dominant over the white color phenotype. So he observed that in the F1 generation, the recessive phenotype, the white phenotype was not expressed at all. All the offspring were heterozygous but expressed the violet color, which led him to hypothesize that the violet color was dominant over this white color. Now, if Mendel had worked on a flower like Snapdragon, he might not have observed these results at all. That's because flowers like snapdragon, roses, carnations and even to an extent us humans, we don't exactly follow Mendel's laws of inheritance and his laws of dominance. Such traits that are not expressed according to Mendel's laws of inheritance are known as non-Mendelian traits. Quite simple, right? Mendelian traits and non-Mendelian traits. And non-Mendelian inheritance can be explained by these phenomena known as incomplete dominance and co-dominance. And what we're observing here with Snapdragon is an example of incomplete dominance. So what is incomplete dominance? Let's take a look at that first. So after Mendel published his studies about dominance and inheritance, a lot of other scientists began to work independently trying to replicate Mendel's results and trying to add more to his work. One such scientist was working with a flower known as snapdragon which belongs to the anterium species. And when he was working with this flower, he crossed a red snapdragon with a white snapdragon, red flower with a white flower. Now we have to remember that the red color is dominant over the white flower color. So if this flower were to follow Mendel's laws of inheritance and Mendel's laws of dominance properly, then if you were to cross a homozygous dominant red flower plant with a homozygous recessive white color plant, then you would expect the F1 generation to all be heterozygous, fine, but you would expect the phenotype to be red. All of these flowers would be expected to have red flowers. So the 100% of the population of the offspring would expect it to have red flowers. But what he observed was very different from this. You see, when this scientist was performing his experiments with Snapdragon, instead of red flowers, the F1 generation showed a completely different third phenotype with pink flowers. How did we get pink here? The mother plant is red and the father plant is white. From where did this pink come? The scientists were quite surprised and they couldn't figure out where this pink was coming from until one of them realized that how do you make pink? You make pink by adding red and white. By mixing red and white, that's how you get pink. So what was essentially happening, this dominant phenotype was not 100% dominant over the recessive phenotype. It was incompletely dominant over this recessive phenotype. The pigment that is produced by this gene. So how are phenotypes expressed? You have the genes, you have the alleles and the alleles produce certain proteins. And in this case, the protein is for the pigment of the flower color. So the pigments produced by these alleles were not fully red. So a mix of both the dominant and the recessive phenotype was being expressed in a third phenotype, which is what is seen in incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, the dominant phenotype is not 100% dominant over the recessive phenotype. An intermediate third phenotype is expressed in the F1 generation when you cross a homozygous dominant organism with a homozygous recessive organism. Now, what would you expect to see in the F2 generation if you were to cross two of these offspring? So, this is the Punnett square that would show the crossing between two heterozygous plants, pink flowers here. This would be the genotypes. You would get one dominant, two heterozygous and one homozygous recessive. Now, if you were to go according to Mendel's laws of inheritance, then this should be red. This should also be red and this should be white. But we know by now that this is not following Mendel's laws of inheritance. So the phenotypes would be this homozygous dominant would have the red color because there are two capital R alleles. So the full extent of the pigment is produced which is why the flower color would be red. 
because there is only one capital r one dominant allele and there is one recessive allele this is not completely dominant over this which is why this would be pink flowers and this homozygous recessive will have no red pigment being produced because there is no capital r allele so which is why this would be a white flower color now if you observe the ratio of this offspring we are somewhat getting mendel's laws of inheritance here because when mendel crossed two heterozygous plants in his f2 generation he also observed this same ratio in the genotypic ratio was 1 is to 2 is to 1 but the phenotypic ratio was still 3 is to 1 because this was completely dominant but in this case both the genotypic and the phenotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 you have one offspring that is red in color which is homozygous dominant two offsprings that are pink in color which is heterozygous and one offspring that is white in color which is homozygous recessive so this we can say that these traits are not exactly following mendel's inheritance but this doesn't disprove mendel's laws of inheritance there are a lot of traits that are inherited in mendel's pattern of inheritance and we can even observe that this is following it to to a certain extent because we are getting this 1 is to 2 is to 1 genotypic ratio in the f two generation so this is all about incomplete dominance next let's take a look at codominance so to understand codominance let's assume that there are two alleles for a gene capital a and small a let's assume that a is dominant capital a is dominant over small a if you were to take two heterozygous individuals having one dominant and one recessive allele each this is what you would get like if you were to cross both of them this is what the f1 generation would look like you have the offspring with homozygous dominant two heterozygous individuals and one homozygous recessive individual in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 now if the traits were completely dominant if a was completely dominant over small a then only the dominant phenotype would be expressed even in the case of heterozygous individuals but in the case of codominance neither is fully dominant over the other which means that even the recessive phenotype is expressed so is the dominant phenotype especially in the case of heterozygous where there is both the dominant and the recessive allele both these traits are expressed along with each other or in another words both are dominant now a most common example of codominance is our blood group human blood group so we inherit our blood group from our parents and we know that there are four major types of blood groups a b a b and o we are not talking about the positive or the negative grouping which is which has to do with rh factor that is also inherited from our parents but we are not discussing about that right now the expressing of the blood groups these four patterns is controlled by a single gene which has three alleles so if the uh, gene is i it has three alleles i a i b and small i now i a and i b are dominant whereas the small i is recessive so for the dominant phenotype to be expressed only one capital i a or capital i b is enough so for these blood groups this is the genotypic pattern now remember that humans are diploid organisms which means that we can have only two copies of each allele even though that there are three alleles we can have only two alleles at a time so for blood group a these are the possible genotypic combinations homozygous dominant of i a i a or heterozygous of i a and small i the same for blood group b i b i b and i b small i in the case of o blood group it is both recessive alleles small i small i now this all has to do with a type of glycoprotein expressed on the surface of rbcs in the presence of i a a specific glycoprotein a is expressed in the presence of i b a specific glycoprotein b is expressed in the case of o no glycoprotein is expressed out of these four blood groups which do you think is an example of codominance remember codominance is expressed usually in the cases of heterozygous phenotypes but if we take a look at this these two are also heterozygous phenotypes but here this 
i a allele is completely dominant over this small i allele so is this i b it is completely dominant over this small i so the example of codominance in the case of human blood grouping is in the form of this ab blood group ab blood group occurs when the genotype is i a and i b since both are dominant both are equally dominant both of the glycoproteins are expressed on the cell surface of the rbcs in the case of the ab blood grouping system now this is again a deviation from mendel's laws of inheritance because in the case of heterozygous only the dominant phenotype is expressed only one phenotype is expressed but here we have two phenotypes being expressed at the same time simultaneously because both are dominant which is an example of codominance you have another example of codominance in the case of coat color for cows please excuse my horrible drawing of a cow this is all i could come up with let's say that there is a brown coat cow which is homozygous dominant and there is a white coat cow which is recessive so the white color is uh, caused by the recessive gene now if you cross these two uh, animals then the f1 would have a genotype of heterozygous capital b and small b but how do you think the coat color of the offspring would look like it would neither be completely brown nor completely white because both phenotypes are expressed which is why it would have a brown coat with white spots which is also known as roan so the coat color of cows of cattle is another example of codominance